It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Well, it's official. Apple's iPhone 5 event is next week. We'll do a roundup of the last-minute rumors, some not so credible. Talk about what we might be seeing next week and next month. And uh, a whole lot more. It's Mac Break Weekly up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Mac Break Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 315, recorded September 4th, 2012. Last call for rumors. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by the new Squarespace. Squarespace introduces a new content management system, making it faster and easier to create a high-quality website or blog, plus more than 50 new features, including mobile responsive designs. For a free trial and 10% off your first purchase, visit squarespace.com and use the offer code MACBREAK9. And by Hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. For 10% off your new domain, visit MacBreak.Hover.com and use the offer code MACBREAK. And buy FreshBooks. FreshBooks is the easy online invoicing app for small business that saves time and gets you paid faster. Join over 3.5 million FreshBooks users and try the service free for 30 days of unlimited use at FreshBooks.com. Be sure to let them know you heard about it on MacBreak Weekly. And buy Audible.com. To download a free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that covers the Macintosh and iOS news. And joining us, we've got a panel of experts. Of course, Andy Anatko, always here, always the best from Chicago Sun Times. Great to have you once again, Andy. You'll be, be you'll be again, skying here. out here next for next week's show. I will be greyhowing my way all the way over there. It's going to take twenty three hours, but I think it's going to be worth it. <laughs> we gave you, you said you were. We gave you the hotel, and you said that you had uh, air air miles, and uh, but I guess greyhound miles is almost as good. I found out they got those receipt, the seats that reclined two clicks, not just one anymore. <laughs> so it's actually an upgrade from from the L1011. Very relaxing. Very relaxing. Uh, also joining us from the UK, from Liverpool, it's Don McAllister of ScreencastsOnline.com. Hey, Don. Hi, Leo. How's it going? Always great to see you. I haven't seen you in ages, and I apologize. It's been a while. It has been a while. He sent me an yeah. email saying, do you remember me? <laughs> <laughs> well, my, some of my Twitter followers were getting a bit uh, worried in case we'd fallen out or something. Mm -hmm. you know? No, no, no. They know how cranky Leo can get. And, you know, <laughs> I've got people on my list. You're not on it yet. Yeah, well, I, I won't be over there next week. I didn't actually get an invite to the event, so oh. I, I won't be flying over next week. But, you know, I, I, I put it down to the fact that I'm over here in the UK, and it's a bit too far to travel just for that. Well, I shall see you in Sydney on Indeed. Uh, November uh, 7th, mm -hmm. and we will set sail for adventure, a.k.a. New Caledonia. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. But uh, it's, it's creeping up very, very quickly, and I've still got lots of work. How many talks are you doing? I'm doing seven. <laughs> Seven, seven, nine. Captain Neil. Sessions. Captain Neil likes to punish Don McAllister. <laughs> <laughs> seven talks, but it's a fourteen-day cruise, so yeah, yeah. And it's, it's, we've spaced them out this time, so it's not too Good. bad. And I've got most of the outline sorted out. It's just all the, the keynote stuff I'm going to have to hammer through in the next couple of months, you know. But uh, no, it's good. It's good fun. It's good fun. I'm used to it now as well. We're talking uh, Mac Mania fifteen, the Insight Cruises yearly uh, Macintosh cruise, and I understand there's a good number of people uh, showing up for this one. It's, it's a long cruise, two weeks. We go to Sydney, then Brisbane, then we sail yeah. out to the Great Barrier Reef. And then uh, some, at some point in the middle of the ocean, there's going to be a, an eclipse of the sun. And then we come yeah, home. Yeah, like we go over to the Caledonian Islands, which, are, to be honest, I've never heard of before. But we actually go from Australia across the Caledonian yeah. Islands, do a circuit around there, and then come wait. back. And I think it's on the way back. We're in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. It's going to be the, fun. The, the silver eclipse. November 7th through 21st. And uh, I think we're going to do a meetup in Sydney on the uh, 6th, the evening of the 6th, unless I'm completely wasted. And then uh, <laughs> and then we'll do a quick one in Brisbane, too, on the evening of the 8th. Oh, or cool. the day of the 8th, because we leave in the evening. So join us if you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll be getting there two or three days before. It's oh, good. A, You're a, smart. It's a long way, you know, from, uh, from England. Obviously, well, it's a long way from the States as well. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I think it's a 20-hour 20 20-hour hour flight. It's longer for you than us. Yeah. So, wow. It will be worth it. Also with us from Macworld Magazine, the editor-in-chief and an and a, um, off-time cruiser, although I don't think you're going on this one, Jason Snell. 
No, I was, and I sadly had to bail out because I've got some more responsibilities here at the office. And, and I was looking at that two weeks, like I really want to go to Australia, oh, but my family couldn't go on this one. It was going to just be me, and then no, the work no stuff fun. came up. So, yeah. oh, well, next time. Yeah, we should say Jason is now editorial director for the entire, uh, I don't know what, everything, that the the, uh, the IDG chain. I don't know. Tell us what you do now. Well, I'm basically, I'm being burned by the light of the sun right now. <laughs> I can really see great. that. It's good. Uh, it's just all of a sudden, oh, giant, boom. your lighting guy finally oh. showed up. I know. I know. Oh. I'm speaking to you from heaven. Uh, I'm the editorial director for uh, IDG's consumer stuff. So Macworld and PC World <gasps> and a new site that we're launching uh, called Tech Hive that's launching next week. So, oh, how exciting. Uh, that's going to keep we're you doing, busy. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be really busy, but uh, it's going to be good. So it's all the people who work on Macworld and PC World are also going to build this uh, this other site that's not Mac or PC, but just general tech. And we're doing that uh, all together. I have it on my screen now if you want to uh, show it, Chad. This is techhive. This is the beta. Com. And the real full site will be up uh, next week sometime. So stay tuned for that. But it's, uh, yeah, we, we did a beta over the summer just to try some stuff out. Is it is it going to be kind of like a tech blog? Is that the idea? Yeah, except not as much. Uh, we don't want to be a news blog. I think there are plenty of tech news blogs out there. So we're going to try to do, you know, just like Macworld and PC World, we'll do some analysis. We'll do how-tos. We'll do product reviews. Uh, and we'll cover the news too, but we don't want to replicate, you know, and be another uh, Verge or in Gadget. We want think, to do something. A little I think different. there's there's so many opportunities, and I, li I like seeing people push the uh, envelope a little bit. Um, there's so many opportunities. The web is uh, could be anything, right? John? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that you? There's a nice picture of me at at age 18. <laughs> Gigantic nerd using his Apple IIe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it'd be nice to do something a little bit broader with. Uh, with uh, the PC World and Mac World teams working on on Tech Hive and trying to trying to do something that can bring, you know, some of the expertise that we've always had in looking at products and, and try to we we always come up against the why are you talking about cameras or cell phones or something if you're Mac and Mac World and PC World so we're trying to find a place that's a little bit broader where we can do that and uh, but we're definitely not trying to be another news blog trying to be a little right. bit different so flip so. will you be Flipboard I'm sure you'll be Flipboard compatible. And we're talking to those guys. Those guys are, you know, we're trying to work with them. But, yeah, because uh, this would be well. a great flip, Flipboard page to yeah, subscribe yeah. to. And we're in a bunch of them already, so I hope we are in Flipboard yeah. too. Um, I've known Jason. Gosh, we've been friends since the old days at Call for Help when you'd come on as uh, <laughs> doing a Mac right. tip the of the Mac week. Tip of the, tip of the day, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's been a long time. That's awesome. Well, it's great to have you all. Uh, the news came out from this. <laughs> Let the word go out from this continent to all the others. There is going to be an event on the 12th. Wow. So I guess Jim Dalrymple got it right and everybody else. Yep. Uh, okay. Apple confirmed September 12th event. Now, this is the invitation. Andy, you got yours, right? I did get mine. Oh, thank God. Great. <laughs> I keep waiting for him to be tainted by his association with me. <sighs> I'm so relieved, Andy. And, of course, Jason, you'll be there. And, Don, uh, you you won't be there because it's kind of far away. But uh, It's a long yeah. So tell us about the invitation, uh, J uh, Andy. Uh, uh, what, what if what, you know? We have to parse it like it was a Kremlin uh, missive. Yeah. Here. Yeah. There's 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 only one item to really start to obsess about. It's of course the twelve for the twelfth, and but the shadow is in the shape of a letter f of a number five. Ooh. So that could mean that they're calling it the iPhone five. It could just simply be a nod to the fact that it's fifth generation, or it could be just as simple as, well, this is the fifth year since they've there have been iPhones. Ha ha ho ho. Uh, you thought we we're going to be calling it the iPhone five, and we actually were we're calling it Exidor, the Apple Exidor <laughs> handset computer. <laughs> no, don't you think this? I mean, they're not going to do that. Jason Snell you know, said I, it could be misdirection. Tim, they don't do misdirection, do they, Jason? Sure they do. Sure they do. They have fun with those little things. It would not surprise me at all if they called it the iPhone 5, but it would also not surprise me if they uh, if they just said, hey, it's the fifth anniversary of the iPhone. We love the iPhone. Here's the new iPhone. And it wasn't the iPhone 5. So we'll see. But I, I, I wouldn't put it past them. I don't. It makes me wonder now. I was sure they weren't going to call it the iPhone 5. And now I am wondering. So they mission accomplished, Apple. <laughs> well, it, was well, I, the, I was, it was... Sorry, Andy. Sorry, it was probably the, uh, the 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 fuss over the the new iPad, and that sort of threw everyone sideways. There was so much fuss and, and discontent that uh, they've either sort of decided, well, no, let's not go through that again with just the new iPhone. Let's actually give it a number this time. So it wouldn't surprise me, but again, it wouldn't surprise me if they did pull something else out of the bag at the same. Why time. not the new iPhone? I've 
Well, because they remember that the Apple currently has what four different iPhone models that are in current play. Uh, this would make five. five. Five? Five? <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, the 3GS <laughs> and the 4 they, they got, and the 4S, those are the three? You can get uh, any yeah, of they, those three right now, got, right? They've got three, right. So they they need one that's the, the hot new phone you pay top dollar for. They've got to have the $99 phone, and now they have to have the free with contract or the prepaid model phone. So they need – I think there's a greater need for them to have a distinction between which of these three phones are they talking about when they talk about this new hot phone model of it so i don't know if they're going to call it the iphone 5 but i wouldn't be surprised if they decided that now nah, let's we don't want that we, we don't want that bag of hurt known as referring to making everybody call this the new iphone i mean everybody mm -hmm. calls the new ipad the ipad 3 anyway uh and, and, and remember that uh, when uh, we, apple is really good at, at that misdirection they I, I really do think they enjoy it i think that there are a lot of games magazines subscribers uh and the people who put together these these uh these invitations remember the one where they uh, last year's event where they called it back to the mac and we thought okay that's great because they're going to return focus back to you know <laughs> in, improving the macintosh when nah. actually the whole theme was we are taking ios features and putting them back into the mac <laughs> so that they're you yeah, know so We'll, okay, so now the next question, which everybody everybody seems to agree, uh, the next question is: um, Is this going to be a Mac Mini? I mean, iPad Mini as well as iPhone event, or is Jim Dalrymple, well, Gruber, Dalrymple, and Pachowski all say second event? Right. Why not? I mean, the iPhone is so huge, and and all of us in the media. I mean, we see this in our servers. Whenever there's, we think Apple events are big, and then there's an iPhone event, and it's the the interest in the iPhone is enormous. Right. And if it's if it's the biggest thing, it's the biggest part of Apple's business. It's the one that everybody cares about around the world. Then they don't need something else. If they've got another place to roll out an iPad later, why split the attention in the media? Why have right. a, you know two sets of reviews or a review that mentions every news story mentions two products instead of one? Why not wait a couple of weeks? It could be that soon, you know, two three weeks. And then still have plenty of time to sell to the holidays and have a you know a second big bang. We've got all these other tech companies that are trying to announce their products around Apple because they they don't want to get swamped by Apple. And imagine Apple saying, well, you know, we're going to do it you know twice. We're going to have two big you know boom kind of events. It makes sense to me that why why they don't need anything more than the iPhone. The iPhone is enormous on its own. I, I honestly don't know. I see the argument for them actually putting them both in the same event because the interest in a smaller iPad isn't at the same. J Jason's absolutely right. I mean, the interest in the new iPhone crosses every religion, every border, yeah. everything. And if Apple wants to really make sure that everybody has the most attention on everything that's possible, that might be a good place to have an iPad event to say, oh, by the way, we have a new iPad. We're reducing the price to 250 bucks, or 199 bucks even. I, I think it really depends on how threatened they feel uh, the uh, Google Nexus 7 tablet is, or how uh, threatened they feel about what Amazon might do with whatever announcement they're going to make on the sixth. Uh, it might be valuable to them to simply say, you know what, we're not even going to make people wait two weeks. We're going to basically kill the market for all these devices <laughs> right now and then move forward. So I, 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 honest, I honestly don't know uh, if uh, Dalrymple Rumpel gives a yup. Uh, to the two event, uh, he, his Dalrymple's response something. was that Gruber's a pretty smart guy, <laughs> <laughs> which is well, the equivalent of a yup. <laughs> they don't like to dilute the message, do they? I mean, um, yeah, but okay. Know, here's the argument in, in Andy's no, in Andy's like, favor. Here's, here's the here's, argument, here's, here's, which well, is he, that he, if you what, if you, what I'm saying, what do they what do they my my what my do they gain? Well, my one difficulty with it is that okay, so they've got one hour to talk about the new iPad, new iPad Mini. Why, how are they going to fill that time? Unless they also fill it with, unless they really dilute that event with, and here's the new version of iTunes, and here's yes. the new partnerships that yeah, we've made. Yeah, I think that's no, what no, it is. There, there's there's, there's yeah. not much you can say about the iPad except for it's smaller than the iPad, it runs all the same apps, it's $200 or $250, and it's available no, I, now. I see it, uh, I see it very much as a, as a positioning thing. I mean, the iPhone is not a holiday product. The iPhone is, a, you know, is an individual product that has the attention of the world. And, you know, it's it's just that they, they've positioned it to come out, you know, around about this time of year. Whereas the, the, the iPad mini, I see them more, more focusing on the holiday market, you know, on the Christmas market. And I could well imagine them rolling up the, the mini iPad as an entertainment device, as a gaming device, rolling new versions of the iPods themselves, which haven't been updated for ages, and, and make a, an event all about, you know, all about the media, all about gifts for Christmas, although they won't obviously phrase it like that, but that will be the intention to get everything in place so that, you know, it's um, the iPhone's a separate event. It's it's global. It's for businesses. It's for all around the world. And then this separate media event, which they used to have. I mean, they used to have, you know, later on in the year, 
you used to have a media event all about music and entertainment. And I can see them actually bringing that back and having the iPad mini as the sort of flagship device to kick that off. But here's what's sure. changed. I mean, it, it, the world now kind of knows or uh, it's interesting how much people are aware of all of this. At first, I thought, oh, it's just us tech journalists. But the world knows that this iPad mini is about to emerge. Does that not kill iPad sales? Until people say, wait and see. Just as iPhone sales have been killed, people say, wait and see. Why would Apple then ex ex expand that pain another month? When you've got the product, you could announce it now. Well, maybe they don't have the product. That's that's part of it. And I think it's different enough that it's not, it's not a new iPad. It's another different kind of iPad. And that makes the calculation, I think, a little bit different. And I, I think what Don says about having that music event you know, you do iPhone and iOS 6 release, and then you come back three weeks later and you have new, iP new iPods and the iPad, and that's your holiday kind of focus. And maybe iTunes, please, please, new iTunes. That's not <laughs> Boy, happy. we could really use that, couldn't yeah. we? Yeah. All right, I want to take a break and come back. I want to talk about the Mini. We also have a picture from uh, a Dutch blog, iPhone news blog, that uh, is interesting. We'll talk about that in just a second. But first, a word from our friends at Squarespace.com. Uh, Got to be very clear when I say Squarespace, because I often talk about this great content management software that they use, and it is great, but, I, but it's hosting too. So what you're getting, and I think this is the best way to do it, is a tight integration between the hosting server where your site lives and the software that it's running. There's a real advantage to that. Security upgrades, automatic. They take care of it. Um, your, uh, your, your site is so tightly integrated that this is why Squarespace sites never go down. They're using a very sophisticated uh, virtual server technology that automatically throws more power at your site the minute, it, the second, the, the instant it's required. So you, you just cannot bring a Squarespace site down. Go ahead and try. Our inside twit blog is uh, on Squarespace, inside.twit.tv. Everybody flood there and you can't bring it down. There's a lot to be said for that, especially if you're going to have a site that maybe we will mention. You cannot slash dot it is the uh, is the old way of uh, putting it. It's also incredible software. I want you to take a look at it. Go, go to squarespace.com. The new Squarespace 6 is here, and it is just beautiful. One of the things they, they've decided to focus on is modern web technologies, HTML5, CSS3, and this thing now that everybody's doing called responsive design. The idea is more and more people are visiting your site with mobile devices. In many cases, more mobile than desktop. So you really can't have like a kind of a dinky mobile version of your site. I'm sure that techhive.com has what's called responsive design, where the site looks the same to, on every platform. So you see, when you put an image up, they make seven copies. So it looks the same on a 27-inch iMac, iPad, iPhone, even an iPod. Because the idea is that your site should be consistent. So the responsive design makes sure it is. You can completely control the look and feel, drag and drop. You don't need to know JavaScript, HTML5, or CSS. If you do, of course, they've got great things like colored code syntax and so forth. But you don't have to. You can just drag and drop stuff. Incredible integration. Uh, if you have an existing site on Tumblr, WordPress, or Blogger, it just sucks it right up. By the way, you can always export out, too. You are never trapped. And then the integration into the social media like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, uh, the Google Maps that you can embed right on your site automatically. All of this makes it possible to make a very rich media site that is easy to use for you, but very powerful. And the best part is you can try this free right now. The all-new Squarespace 6 is ready to run if you go to squarespace.com. You don't even need our offer code. You just need to go to squarespace.com. And click the Get Started button. You've got two weeks to use every feature of the site to really bang on it. Import all your stuff if you want. And really see what it would feel like and look like. The great templates, 300 plus Google Plus fonts. Then if you decide you want to buy the pricing, they've really simplified this. You just have a number of tiers. It's very straightforward, the pricing now. $8 for the standard, $8 a month. If you want, and this is the one I would get. For $16 a month when you buy annually, you get unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage, unlimited page, just no limits. That's For a podcaster, this is huge. This is everything you need. $16 a month. And this is when you're going to use the offer code. 10% off that first purchase when you use MacBreak9. M-A-C-B-R-E-A-K and the number 9. That'll give you... 10% off whatever your first purchase is. That's why the annual purchase is worth it. Plus, another thing you get when you do an annual purchase, you get a custom domain absolutely free. So you can make it, you know, my hot blog, techhive.com. I think that's taken. And then, uh, and then apply it 
And they'll do all the, you know, behind the scenes wiring. So people go to that domain and that's your Squarespace site. It's really nice. If you're looking to start a new website, maybe you want a purpose built site, somebody you know is getting married or having, maybe you're having a baby. You know, really, you got to get the name of the baby.com, right? And then have that site, that baby site. What a great idea. Somebody was doing this. I thought this was great. They were, uh, it was a Google ad, right? They were Gmailing all the stuff to the kids. They created a Gmail address for the kid and Gmail it all. You can have it all go to the blog. And then the kid, when the kid's 18, you go, oh, by the way, the whole time I've been blogging, <laughs> here's your site. <laughs> that would be mean. That would be mean. I wish I could have done that, though, when my son was born. He's it, now, you know, they didn't have, the web wasn't around, I don't think, 18 years ago. Squarespace.com, MacBreak9. That's the offer code. Give it a try. The new Squarespace is entirely redesigned to give you the best. The best you can get. So here's a picture. I don't think this could be a fake. I mean, that, somebody's put a lot of effort into this if it's a fake. And if we zoom in, this is a, clearly some box, the packaging for, and it says the, I think it says the new iPhone. Mm. The new iPhone. Mm. I don't know. Because did, uh, does that not look credible? Does does the new iPad have any packaging that says the new iPad? Oh, that's interesting. I might have forgotten. That's interesting. I don't, I don't, I don't recall that, but... No, I, I don't think so. I think that's... It's iPad. just iPad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a confirmed fake, they're telling me in the chat room. The icons are wrong. <laughs> wow. Somebody's really examined this in detail. <laughs> wow. The icons are wrong, ladies and gentlemen. That's a good fake. Somebody put a lot of effort into that fake. <laughs> I guess you could do a one-off, though, just to print press. <laughs> also, also, I used to work on the Marvex 41A, and the blue switch should be next to the red oh. switch. So <laughs> Those icons are wrong. This doesn't know what they're talking about. <laughs> it's a fake printing press. <laughs> By the way, we were, we were talking about the fact that, oh, there's the Tech Hive blog. Yay, free plug. Thanks, Free Leo. plug. I love it. <laughs> I'm, ex I'm excited because it's something different. And I do think that in tech, I'm, I'm sorry, I am giving you a free plug right now, but I do think in tech journalism, what's exciting now is not the news. The news has become uh, a commodity. Facts are commoditized, yeah. right? Yep. It's analysis, it's understanding, it's depth. And that's really, there's an opportunity there. And, and, you know, with sites like The Verge doing such a good job on just the breaking news, I wouldn't want to go up against you know the verge any anymore. <laughs> That's just you know. <laughs> yeah, I like that site. I yeah, I don't need. We don't need another one of those. We don't. Uh, we don't. I mean, uh, they've done. They they're breaking more stories now. What Apple's holding an event? <gasps> oh my! <laughs> breaking news. So uh, so uh, anyway, this is this is uh, you know the fact that it has the five there does kind of lend one to believe this is an iPhone event. Not a uh, iPad mini event. I, I'll, I'll, I'll bet you $4 that it's an iPhone event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not five? Not five. <laughs> 10 a.m., Herba Buena Center for the Arts. So let's uh, tell you right now that MacBreak Weekly next week will not be on Tuesday. It'll be on Wednesday. We're going to flip-flop with security now. Andy Anako is flying out for the event. Uh, Jason, I hope you'll join us too after the event. And what we'll if do, I, if I can, yes, absolutely. I have arranged for a Tim Cook puppet to be uh, created by Brian Hogg, who's the master of puppets. Uh, he does the uh, a Walt Moss puppet, and we're going to put him on <laughs> a green screen. I'm going to take pictures from the live blogs, put it up behind him, and he's going to read the text. So we are going to do basically a reenactment. So for those of you who can't, <laughs> those of you who can't get into the live event uh since apple doesn't stream it <laughs> we've decided to reenact it what's wrong with that there's a phrase for this leo it's the puppet cast puppet cast so um uh our our uh, crack team will be here and analyzing the tim cook puppet as he gives us i hope god you know i didn't think of this we should get a scott forstall uh puppet as well yeah i sure should Shoot, I forgot. Who else would be on stage? Get a big Bob Mansfield puppet, because that would be a great puppet. Hey, Bob Mansfield! <laughs> and then, <laughs> who I'm going to meet, and probably Bob Mansfield talks like this, but I just, I think he talks like this. Nope. <laughs> no, he's a big guy. He, he talks like this. Uh, uh, I'm Bob. I'm glad he's back. We needed a blue-collar Bob in there. So we'll have a blue-collar Bob puppet. We'll have a Phil Schiller puppet. Mm -hmm. We'll have, oh, we got to get, I got to go call Brian. I only had to make uh, the Tim, <laughs> maybe the Tim Cook puppet could just do it all. We don't have to do puppet changes. Just one puppet that does it all. <laughs> we do have the iCEO somewhere. Did Sarah take it home finally? <laughs> okay. 
Uh, I'm, ex I'm excited. Now you, you can't, now, you can't just make like a generic puppet that like with not, no features and just like stubble on it so that you put one set of eyes on it. It's Johnny Guy. You put like a white sort of wig on it and there a pair of glasses and it's Tim Cook. I think it's a good investment because uh, if Apple does two events, the ears the we'll be using it again. How about like an anthropomorphic apple? Like the talking, <laughs> the talking apple, apple tells you what it's going <laughs> to yeah. Annoying apple. What about annoying apple? Let's make one of those too. That's easy. We just put <laughs> lips on an apple. Yeah, well, we're gonna have to we switch him out every once in a while. Otherwise, he'll get he'll get rotten. Right. <laughs> Let's do sure that. He's a fresh apple. We'll do it. Uh, I'll be annoying apple. You can okay. put my lips on an apple, Sounds and good. I'll go, and I'll and I'll heckle. Sounds good. I'll heckle from the audience. <laughs> I like the S3. You got the S3. What about the Android, Tim? What about the Android? Well, it'd be good. It'd be great. It'd be really annoying. And at the end, you could squish it with a mallet. Actually, uh, I do think this is not something that Android should celebrate. But this, this according to uh, the story today, the uh, Galaxy S3 did, in fact, outsell the iPhone for the first time ever last month. But, of course, because everybody's waiting for the iPhone 5. That doesn't mean anything. Uh, well, let me... Aren't you, aren't you kind of annoyed by all these uh, all these people who are like, oh, well, this phone didn't sell as much as this one, so this one is, this phone is a it's, failure. It's horse race journalism, mm -hmm. and it's the lowest form of journalism. But it's yeah, easy. Like, like, you know, it's, 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 it's like uh, people who keep, keep crowing about how uh, Jane Leno keeps beating David right. Letterman in right. late-night ratings. Like, you know what? CBS had absolutely no nothing going on at 1130. Right. He, Letterman, like, built a business where nothing but, like, arid ground stood. I'm sure that CBS is pretty happy to be second in a business where they had, you know, 20-year-old Columbo reruns before he came <laughs> along. Uh, I guess we can do another roundup of iPhone 5 rumors. It's our last chance. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's oh I'm gonna remember these days I'm gonna treasure these days the iPhone five yes. rumor days and, oh those were the good old days until iPhone if you're, if you're if you're stuck with a top with a, a topic for a column and you're an hour away from deadline just make some stuff up and it'll be fine yeah well I don't even want to go through this yeah why yeah. not why, why why bother why bother you know and we'll find out we're gonna find out in a week. Uh, everybody's still on board with the idea that it will be available nine days after the event on the 21st. Any reason to think otherwise? That's the pattern. That's the, pattern the pattern is they announce on a Wednesday the embargoed first reviews from the people on that kind of A-list show up the next Wednesday. Mossberg, and it goes Pogue, on sale on Friday. Vague. And then, Jason, are you on that A-list? Yeah, I have been recently. So, yeah, you don't cross wanna, fingers. Yeah. Those are the people who get... Uh, iPhone fives right away. Those that day, and the, so or they actually they they, yeah. they have them by now. They've had them by now, right? No, 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 no. The, the, that's the like super presidents <laughs> get that. But most the, the the pattern they do is that they um that after the event, certain reviewers uh, end up with uh, demo units, review units that they take away under embargo. So, uh, but it doesn't happen before the announcement. That's a super. If if anybody, that would only be your Walt Mossbergs or David Pogues right. of the world. Right. Right. I don't buy this video. Uh, that there will be new earbuds. Anybody could. This this is as bogus as that printing press thing, right? Or no? Yeah, it, it could be from anywhere. It could be packaged for anything. It actually looks I mean, like a puppet. I, yeah, I mean, it, they, they look kind of cool. I don't know how they work they outside. Don't, they don't look comfortable. Well, Do you want to insert that in the, your ear? The, the existing earbuds aren't very comfortable. So no, they actually, they deserve, they, we need an updated earbud. There's no question about that. But there's a good there's a good brisk market in third party earphones for the iPhone. Yeah. In fact, that's I would say the iPhone and the iPod have created a market for uh, third 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 party uh, ear earpods and. The so thing with that particular model though is that there's no microphone on the cord. But I, I've oh. heard people say there might be microphones built into the actual earbuds themselves. But I can't really see that because also on on the on the microphone you've got the controls as well, which you know. You know what? There is a microphone. What is that thing at the bottom of the? Uh, of the plastic, there's a there's an there's an opening there. Um, that could be. A yeah, some vents and things in it. Yeah, yeah. This is bogus. I, it's almost, I didn't report on this. I didn't want to report on this, but yeah. See, the, the, these things are getting even more suspicious because now it's pretty much a given that if you really want to get lots and lots of clicks, uh, come up with a half-baked, right. credible rumor one week before you know that the announcement is going to come because that's when people are sort of expecting really interesting rumors to come out. That's that's the point where there are a lot of leaks that are kind of impossible for Apple to really prevent because now the information is in way too many uh, sets of hands. So, yeah, I mean, it's... it's I got a credit with Mac Rumors. I got a credit with Mac Rumors for this, though. This this video they made of what a new iPhone screen would look like 
based on, <laughs> and they put nice music behind. <laughs> so, and actually, they put some effort into it because they had to simulate a taller screen. Now, this is if it were the 1136 by 640 uh, screen. So this is at least they're not even pretending that this is a real one. They're just saying this is what it would look yeah. like if it's tr if that's true. Um, and all all good stuff. Not much of a surprise. It is more sixteen nine, isn't it? It's that's the rumor is that it's exactly sixteen by nine. Yeah. Uh, and Apple's never done a sixteen by nine device ever, right? Right. They've always done no, four exactly. three. Right. So there's some advantage to uh, having it for 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 content anyway. Yeah, well, the I, iPhone's I always been slightly widescreen, but not widescreen enough. So right, you have to, right. you know, double tap to lose the letterboxing and and the right. uh, I, the iPad's been four by three. And then I think they might have had a sixteen by nine laptop at some point, but it's not been a focus for them to go and embrace sixteen by nine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it really is a future trend that every new device has to be at least informed by the presence of tighter connectivity with uh, with an actual regular HD TV. So if it's yeah, possible it's, to do that without, I, I don't see how they, I've used 16 by 9 tablets before and they always just seem like you're holding a legal document as opposed to like a workable tablet. Yeah. I don't think it would come to that, but I think that there's always that part of the design process where it's like, how good is this going to be to drive content, to drive games uh, off of an Apple TV? And if you can put a 69 uh, display on there, why go with some oddball uh, uh, display that you have to manufacture yourself? I think the reason that they didn't do 16 by 9 on the iPhone initially is that it's just, uh, it does change the shape of the device and it makes it longer and it makes it, you know, when you're holding it, it the weight is pulling, you know, pulling in your hand a little bit more. And it, it, these devices are getting so light now that for something like a phone, it maybe doesn't matter. But I think that was part of it is that they thought the shape, you don't want it to be too long in one direction or you end up with a big, you know, like stick <laughs> and that's no good. Yeah, it's great for the video producers, though, because, you know, 16 by 9, I'm, I've always produced all my content in 16 by 9 since, well, since I started. And whenever sure. you do see it on the phone, the, the phone at the moment, because it does letterbox in, uh, it's just a little bit too small to actually watch a screencast comfortably. But, you know, with that extra little bit of width so that it pops out a bit further, um, I was really looking forward to that. The uh, Don Cornelius in our chat room, the late host of <laughs> Soul Train, points out that... <laughs> It probably says it like this: that uh, Apple's displays used to be sixteen ten, but are now sixteen nine. The 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 cinema displays. So I guess I take it back. Apple has done sixteen nine products, but none of them. And also the eleven inch MacBook Air is uh, sixteen by nine. Is it? Well. No, mm -hmm. I guess it is, huh? I'm, look, yeah, I'm looking so at the, one. It's where the world is going, you know. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, of course, uh, I think uh, Samsung and Nokia and Amazon are all going. I'm glad Apple's having that event because we moved everything over so we could. <laughs> It beat them <laughs> to the punch. It would have been embarrassing if Apple didn't have that event on the 12th. Uh, Samsung last week had its big, uh, at IFA, the big uh, announcement of the Samsung Galaxy Note 2. Uh, Apple's response was to file in court for uh, to block the Note 1 and the Galaxy S3. Uh, they also announced new Windows phones and Windows uh, RT tablets and new uh, Windows 8 computers, because why not? Uh, Nokia uh, has an event uh, tomorrow, right? Nokia World, in which they'll announce their new Windows phones uh, and maybe other stuff. Uh, Motorola and Google have their announcement tomorrow as well. And then Amazon is uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Thursday, yeah. Yeah, they're going to announce, I think it's probable, Kindle Fire, since the Kindle Fire suddenly is out of stock on Amazon.com. Uh, yeah, all new, King, all new Kindles, I think. All new Kindles, yeah. probably, yeah. And all of this, uh, because they would announce it now anyway, but it just uh, also once the Apple announces the iPhone and the Mini, there's the news cycle is all <laughs> is empty. There's a vacuum right now, so they're going to fill that vacuum. Yeah, but the danger is that they're going to, you know, they come out before Apple, and then Apple gets to drop the bomb of right. whatever they've got. And you know, I could argue the other side that they might want to wait. The problem is that. It's not just Apple owning a day. Apple owns that day and the whole next week, and then the reviews come out, and then right. it gets released, and their lines, and it's like a week and a half before you can even say anything if you're one of these other companies. So I see why they do it. It is interesting. HTC, I guess, is coming out. They're mm -hmm. doing an event after the Apple event, so they're taking the other the other approach. Oh, good. Well, we yeah. can test I'm your sure. test your thesis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if that's a, as big a deal. I think I think they all know ex how big any new I, any new iPhone announcement is going to be, how big any new uh, iTunes announcement is going to be, and they know that they're really not going. It, it's I, I I think that they they can see that as an inevitability, 
And it's not as though they feel as though by jumping them by one week, I think I think by jumping them one week, if there's any effect whatsoever, they know that they have that little extra push to get into the coverage of Apple. So many of us are, are writing about Apple a week beforehand. Uh, like editors are saying, hey, can you give us some content about uh, the iPhone 5? Can you give us some content about this, that, and the other? It's a good chance to talk about, well, let's see. Now Kindle's coming out with, is doing something on, on August 6th, uh, excuse me, September 6th. Here's what it seems likely they're going to do. I don't think we're going to see an iPhone. I don't think they're going to see an, an Android phone, but yeah. Yes, we're going to see a ref at least a better version, a, a less complainy version of the fire. Uh, and that's a good way to sort of piggyback on a coverage. So it's not it's not a case of being clobbered so much as wanting to be part of the conversation. Yeah. I think also as well, it's the it's the response. I mean, if they do come after the event, there's not really a lot they can do to respond to what Apple come out with. I mean, possibly it's like tweaking the pricing, but as far as the technology and the actual products, I mean, they're, you know, they're, they're, they're already sort of sealed down. So... You know, it's, but they it's could say, I mean, for instance, let's say Samsung decided to, to talk about the Note 2 after Apple. They could say, Apple, four inch screen, we've got five and a half inches. Apple, quad dual core processor, we have quad core processor. They say, Apple, we uh, 512 megs of RAM, we've got two gigs of RAM. They could say, I mean, there's a lot they could say. They, <laughs> there's a huge amount they could say. Yeah. Uh, and, and the thing is, they can't say that until after the iPhone 5 comes out. Yeah. On, on the other hand, the, 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 big bomb that's hovering in the air is still the price of the the iPad mini that there are three pricing levels for that device and if it's $199 yeah. that is that's a neutron yeah, bomb to, that's to, it that's to, yeah. to a whole class of devices yeah. 250 is competitive 300 is like okay great we don't we could definitely compete with a $300 iPad mini so yeah well I'm sure I think so, it so, may so be that issues. it may be that Amazon is just hoping they can sell as many Kindle Fires as possible until next month, and then they're going to say, "Okay, oh, no, see, it's no, over." See, Amazon is in a great position because it's like the every place where people are going to be going online to shop. Really, it's just Amazon.com, and that's going to be on the front page everywhere. Yes, and it's going to be a very, very easy purchase for a lot of people to make, especially people who don't define a tablet as a post PC computer. They define it as here's what I read my books on. Here's right. what I get my movies on. And here's what I order my 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 arm salve, my my, my, my heel and, and elbow salve with. <laughs> uh, maybe, 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 maybe I'm maybe my I'm gold bond medical powder. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it'll be they interesting to see if they actually... they those flavorless crackers you like, Eleanor. <laughs> Should I order three boxes? We're on Amazon Prime. We can have it by Thursday. It'll be interesting to see if they can actually go international with it this time, because they failed on the last one. We really? What happened this. internationally? Well, we Did they offer it? the fire in the UK. Never saw so, it. Never saw it. We saw some of the... Um, we saw the the, the e ink Kindles. They, came, they came across eventually, but we never actually got to see the fire. So it'll be interesting to see whether or not they're, they're actually going to go international with it this time around. See, I for, I, we, we forget this here in the uh, U.S. that this is not an international product. Yeah. They didn't, yeah, did they not have the fire the in Canada either? Uh, no. No, not in Canada either. It was U.S. only. Yeah, I think this is their – I think they made the first can fire. They tried to do it quickly, and it was U.S. only because that was easier for them. But I would I would be shocked if the this fire doesn't roll out much more broadly internationally. And uh, let's throw in also that the e-ink models, you can buy them cheaper if you agree to see ads on them. Love and that. it wouldn't surprise me if they use that model to push the fire price down even yeah. further, maybe to 179 or, or 159 or 149. Uh, you know, that really could be a fantastic – for a, a little tablet like that, even if Apple does come in at, at, at 249 Don, yeah, what is Amazon's though. reputation in the UK? I mean, it, do people shop at Amazon? Is that a... Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it is. It is. They, they got a, a lot of bad press a couple of months ago because of the tax situation. They've got um, various offshoots in various parts of Europe where they pay very little tax or right. hardly any tax. So do they, do they charge value-added tax in the UK? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to... What is it, like 20%? 20%. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, at least I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah, no, I'm sure they do. Yeah, yeah. Twenty percent. It's a it's a huge chunk of change. Uh, that'd be I wouldn't buy but, anything. Uh, <laughs> it's like I'm not going to pay twenty percent. That's worse than our gas. That's like gas tax here. It's oh, no, don't even it's start like, on petrol prices. Come on. It's it's, it's, like, it's like Don. Every, every time you fly over here, isn't it? Doesn't it make more financial sense for you to? Basically, throw away all of the clothes that you wore during your week here in the U.S., fill it with electronics, and then just use the savings you made on VAT to just you use that to buy new clothes when you get home. Yeah, see, the thing is that they don't add the VAT. Normally in the shops, when you see a price, that's the price including VAT. So you oh, sort of forget you're just about used to it. it. 
you just get used to it. And if I go to a wholesalers or, or, or you know, you know, we have a cash and carry places here that that do add VAT on, but they give you the cost price, and you go into, oh, that's cheap, and then you realise yeah. that they have actually included the VAT it's on it. Twenty percent. That's quite a bit more. of a shock, but uh, you do, you do get. You know, you do get used to it because it's, it's always included in the price whenever you go sh in normal retail outlets anyway. Just just in from 9 to 5, Mac, an exclusive iPods likely to share the stage with iPhone 5 at next week's Apple event. This is Mark Gurman uh, writing. Um, he says the new iPad, he st they think, will still have its own announcement, but they'll put iPods. What? It makes huh. no sense. I don't know. If, I don't know yeah. where he gets where he gets this story, uh, but uh, maybe it's just you know. It's I have to say, hey, chips again, isn't it? It's yeah. all about link bait at this point. Yeah. I, 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 likely, likely, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. No, because nobody's going to remember uh, after next week that nine to five Mac said, "Hey, where's the iPods?" You know, it's just, it's just. I don't. <laughs> I mean, maybe they got a good source. I, 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 I don't. It's you, you want to you know it's it's all about reputation. It's not about right. how you do in September. It's like year after right. year after Remember. year. Did you how many times did you cry wolf and how many yeah. times did you actually deliver the goods? Yeah. Well, and also let's remember, this, this may not be the case in this particular story, but uh, Apple does make changes at the last minute. There right. are often things that are in a keynote and you, you'll That's see it true. sometimes. You'll be like, why didn't that get mentioned? It's in a press release later or it comes out a couple weeks later. And I've, I've heard that several times that there are products that are into the keynote up to the night before. Right. I, I don't know if this is still true. Certainly was true when Jobs was in charge oh, yeah. where they would just yank it out and say, no, nah, we're, we're not going to even bother. We're, we're, we've got enough here. Let's just dump it. Oh, yeah. So sometimes you can see these reports that end up being wrong. That might have been possible. I mean, it may be that there's a, a chance that they're considering putting iPods in the event. And they're, so they've got it in there for now. And they'll decide later whether they're going to they're going to rip it out because they do. Yeah. Apple, you'd be surprised how stuff can change at the last minute with yeah. Apple. No, no, no you're absolutely again, right. Yeah. I've, I've said before about a story that I had that was absolutely dead cold. I had it locked with multiple sources. And then two weeks before the announcement, it just fell apart. There was sort of a change of decision saying, you know what? We decided this this partnership is not does not work for our strategy. And so we're not going to go ahead with this. And it's like, OK, good. Thing. Yeah, <laughs> good, good, good thing. That, good thing that I'm not like writing like 8000 words. Exclusive. I got this. I got this. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, that would have been very embarrassing. <laughs> It must be hard. I'm glad that we don't have to worry about our reputation. It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure your Apple is CEO puppet show is going to turn that right around. To you, you know? I can't wait. So you really don't want to go to another event, do you, Leo? Really? Oh, I gave up that long ago. That has never happened. Although like, I haven't well, checked my email. Maybe I did get it. Wouldn't that be funny if I got an email? This is, is there such a thing as PR suicide by cop? It's like, you, know, just, you just want to make sure that you can no longer say Apple hates me. You can say, no, no, it's because I did the puppet show. That's why I'm not. In why would they that. hate that? That's 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 I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not guessing one way or another. I'm just I'm just saying that that's <laughs> what uh, what uh, what is the uh, what is the from address on your uh, on your Leo invitation? And, 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 uh, and, and then the other puppets are not going to be making out with each other. <laughs> That's contains all I'm, RSVP. All I'm asking. Uh, in the subject, it, it's RSVP in the subject. No, in the, the from. From is RSVP. Wow. Mm -hmm. RSVP like RSVP.apple.com. Yeah, I haven't received anything from RSVP in the last five years, so I think I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's what the five means. Your five, five years is up. Five years is up. I'm in I'm in I don't care. I like in fact there's a certain it's a certain badge of honor. Uh Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like that designation either. It's, it's like <laughs> I'm uh, making no, lemons out of lemonade, Andy. Give I, me a break I, I, here. I, I, I'm, I'm throwing, I'm throwing you a bone. I, 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 you're, you're a lovely person, and how, why would anybody not want you in an event? You are the Mary Tyler Moore of any tech event. You turn the event on with your smile. You can take a nothing release and suddenly make it all be, mean, seem worthwhile. It's me, it's you, boy, Leo, and you should know it. And I should know it with every little something I show it. All right, uh, let's take a break, and uh, I'm going to continue to search for an invitation. <laughs> <laughs> while, I, while Leo searches for an invitation to an Apple event, mm, nothing. Motorola Mobility. Um, that's it. <sighs> Let us talk about Hover.com. When's the last time you registered a domain name? Can I tell you about the best place to do it? This is uh, We love these guys. This is Two Cows. Uh, 
And I'm just such a fan of Elliot Noss, who's been around since it used to stand for the ultimate collection of Windows software. But they've really branched out. Great Canadian company. Uh, and uh, they decided to uh, be the company that kind of reinvents businesses that need reinventing. They started with domain names. They're doing cell phones now. Let me talk about Hover.com. Simplify domain name management. Um, the best domain management tools in the industry. A clean, simple registration process. you got to love that. Uh, built in uh, who is privacy. It's part of the cost. So uh, that way your public information, uh, your personal information isn't available in public. Uh, unlimited domain forwarding, advanced DNS management. It really is great. Now, they don't do hosting. And I, I kind of like that. They're not upselling you on hosting or anything like that. Uh, you can get, of course, all the really popular domains like .com, .net, .co, .ca, .org, but also country-specific domains. You can use .it, .asia, .es, .us, .de. And they have some of the newer domains, .pro, .triplex, .tv. When you call for customer support, you're going to get great support from Hover. They have a no-hold policy for customer service calls Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And if you go to macbreak.hover.com, we're going to get you 10% off your new domain. So if you're one of those people, I, I know many of them, like Dick D. Bartolo, who just every time you hear something, oh, that's a good domain, they just register it. They're not, I do that too. I have quite a few domains that don't have any sites attached. This is the place to not only save, but then make it very easy. If you're ready to transfer away from your current registrar, they make that easy too with, with a concierge service. Normally they charge 25 bucks for that, but I am told if you mention us, they'll waive that fee. And it's $10 for the, you know, for the transfer, but that gives you an extra year on your domain. So it's a very good deal. You can call 866-731-6556 or use macbreak.hover.com. And make sure you use MacBreak as the offer code if you make a purchase because you'll get 10% off any of your purchases. The best domain registrar in the business, hover.com. People tweet me all the time, what was that registrar? I don't know why it's hard for them to remember. Think of a hummingbird hovering over your new website, hover.com. They're very good. Did we lose Jason? We're going to call him back. We lost Jason. We lost the Jason. He is, he is standing by on Skype. So if I had my Jason puppet, he could like just <laughs> Skype his comments no, to me. <laughs> I did that once with uh, John C. Dvorak. We could never get him back in the earliest days of Twit. And so um, he was in the instant message and I did an imitation of him. It didn't work so good. Um... I'm going to not say anything about the Apple Samsung trial. I already mentioned that Apple's now trying to get an injunction against the Galaxy S3 and the Galaxy Note. Uh, they are trying to... Okay, I, I'm, I lied. I am going to say something about it. <laughs> they, they, the, the original date for injunctive relief was December. And uh, they really don't want to wait that long. So Apple has filed a request for permission to bring a motion for reconsideration of the scheduling. Um. Apple complains the court has asymmetrical schedules for its decision <laughs> on Samsung in September versus Apple. <laughs> I tried Apple that one on my, one of my college teachers. It didn't work. <laughs> you know, you have asymmetrical uh, uh, grading policies. Uh, but it is important because um, December is a long time in the, the tech world. But, you know, the courts are on a different kind of schedule. Um, it's almost as though they are not owned by a company and don't serve to do their bidding. <laughs> <laughs> that crazy talk. I learned in college when I covered a, a, a murder trial, actually, that they, the wheels of justice do spin. They spin incredibly slowly, yeah. so slowly as to be almost imperceptible. They're, right. It's a different world. The tech world is moving light speed and uh, the justice system is, is not. <laughs> so... Um, if you want the, the discussion, the pros and cons on this, the uh, best place to go, FossPatents.com, and uh, she's got a great uh, discussion of why uh, Apple's probably right in this uh, request because uh, it, does, it does, in fact, it is asymmetric, apparently. Uh, but it's complicated, <laughs> like everything else. Mm -hmm. um, not she, he, Florian Mueller. Um... Is this possible? Apple and Google's CEOs in secret patent talks? Secret talks. I, yes. love, I love secret talks. Are they <laughs> in the Malta? 
I, Larry I, Page, I, I, who I can't talk at all. in the woods. I think Larry love a secret talk. <laughs> Larry's writing it on a piece of paper, and Tim Cook have been conducting, according to Reuters, behind-the-scenes talks about a range of intellectual property matters, including mobile patent disputes between well, the company. If yeah. you listen to the, what the judges have all ruled in this, I mean, the judges have said to to um, Apple and Samsung and you know all, and Google to an extension here. It's always in the in this business. It's it's come on, cut a deal. Yeah. Cut, don't make this go to trial. Don't make this go to the jury. Cut a deal. And, and this was with Samsung. It was a rare case where it actually went to the jury. But so often, and you know, my sister's an intellectual patent patent attorney. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it doesn't go to the jury. It, you even if you're in trial, it just it, they always settle. So this. This was one of those things where I think we a lot of people feel that Steve Jobs uh, did you know he wanted to go thermonuclear on Google and it, you know that may be true but T Tim Cook is in charge now and maybe he's looking at this and saying look you know we're going to do what the judges suggest we do and what everybody else does in these situations which is we're going to see if we can cut a deal I, I they may not reach a deal but they should be talking it, absolutely they should be talking about this. If nothing else, it's a, it's a really good idea for executives at that level to have some sort of a pipeline, communication line between them. Remember that even even Reagan and the Kremlin had a hot, had a hot phone between each other. Right. So if it's, it, I think that one of the reasons why Samsung went through Renuclear like that was that there really, as far as I could tell, there really was no line of communication between those two that was of any productive ongoing nature. So it was difficult for it to... Not, 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 not that the, these two companies would ever get together for a beer and decide, well, how about you take this patent and we'll take this patent. And we just, here's a dollar. You got a dollar. Great. Let's sign this bar napkin. Great. We are friends again. Now we do the dance of joy. But it really, it, it really is part of these casual relationships that are ongoing where there is at least a basic level of cordiality that you build upon that, that prevents these things from getting to exactly this sort of level. So I, if, if this rumor is true, I'm glad that happens. I, I really think that the only way for this to – these the situation to end productively for consumers is for there to be at least some sort of a back channel in which we in which at some point someone says eh, actually this patent we we weren't trying to copy the, this this iphone feature but this is how it turned out let's talk and see if there's a way we can give this these guys like a dollar 12 per handset and just avoid problems in the future and maybe it would be a way to i, I think it's a good way to make sure that good features that are too good not to copy as well as features that are kind of obvious that anybody would come up with on their own don't wind up crippling the future of uh, of handset development. Actually, it does remind me of those photos that were. Of, uh, remember when uh, Jobs met with Eric Schmidt? And I think it was when things were turning nasty as well. There were those photographs of him in the coffee shop where they were just uh, yeah. having a chat over a cup of coffee. You know, it's, that, it's that, at that sort of level, they're the sort of lines of communication yeah. they try to establish, I think. And also, Although it's, keeping it's in just, mind it's, it's that... Good. I'll, I'll, the, the Apple Samsung deal was not just about. I mean, Google and Apple could come to some agreements, and it doesn't stop a phone maker from adding their own skin on top mm -hmm. that infringes on Apple's patents. I mean, Samsung. A lot of the issues in that case were not things involving Android per se. They were involving TouchWiz, and they were involving the hardware. and And so Google might end up making nice with Apple, and it still might be a problem for individual phone makers. Well, I I, I think there's. I, I would like to think there's at least agreement that. Both Google Google has the goods on Apple. Apple has the goods on Google that they can either decide to die with their hands wrapped around each other's throats like Jakar and Ambassador Moore and Londo, or they could simply agree that we can't we, we we this is not a productive way for either of us to do business. I didn't know we'd be making Babylon Five references today. Yet, but well, oh, check. No, I, I saw I saw you on the list. I figured that you know what? I bet that together we could make that happen. <laughs> and so we have <laughs> enzyme and catalyst. Meanwhile, Mark Gurman uh, of Nine to Five Mac is saying, "What? What? what you did <laughs> somebody told him you you've been dissing him about the?" I said, "No, I just said I didn't think there'd be any iPods announced next week. We shall see." Mark, you and I will make a bet. You know, a case of beer or something if they announce iPods next week. Um, just just to get back to the uh, Google uh, Apple uh, CIO uh, CEO uh, uh, conversation, Reuters has a single uh, source who says the conversation last week did not result in any formal agreement. But the two executives agreed to continue talking. Mm. Uh, I think that's, that's they're doing the jobs. That's it's exactly. Yeah. Remember yeah. Eric Schmidt and uh, Steve Jobs going to the coffee shop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was going to say, was it was it coincidence that they decided to choose a table that was on the sidewalk exactly. in public view? Look, look at us. So there's a, there are a lot of levels to why yeah, they want to get together and have these sort of talks. And and exactly as 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 uh, uh, you said, Jason, um, I think that the billion dollar judgment uh, against Samsung 
is a clarion call to everybody. Let's just stop this and 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 work it out. And I think right. that in some ways that's the patent system actually working properly. Um, yeah, I'm, I I don't know if it's working, but the the you know there are two ways to go. You can go thermonuclear and right. and forget about it and and everything explodes, or you can realize that this is all about deterrence and making deals, and that yeah. you know your nuclear stockpile is is meant there as a talking point and for leverage, and not ever meant to truly be deployed. It got overheated. And, and, it got overheated. Yeah, and somebody pushed the button, and now mm -hmm. let's everybody stand down and talk. You know, we'll work. We can work this out. A billion dollars—that's that's enough to get somebody's attention, I think. Uh, speaking of that, Apple rejects an app that tracks U.S. drone strikes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they would reject that. Um, uh, I although so I so you can pilot a drone with an iPhone, but you can't track it. <laughs> right. Send users a pop. Bad taste, didn't they? So this is this the idea of this app, and I'm, it actually seems political that they rejected it, but maybe not. It would send users a pop up notice whenever a drone killed somebody in in uh, you know Afghanistan or uh, somewhere. But at, this is called Drones Plus, <laughs> as opposed to Drones Minus. I don't know. See, it's worth paying the dollar ninety nine to get rid of the ads. Uh, Apple says it's objectionable and crude. Yeah, well, just getting getting, a, getting a, an alert every time someone dies. That's yeah. Yeah, but somebody's uh, yeah, dying. I, I, I mean, see, I, don't, I, I think see, that there's. I see, the po I see the point of. I see the point of the app, though. It doesn't. It, I, think that, it, I think Apple it seems to me that it reaches both sides potentially, right? It's people who want to cheer on drone strikes and people who want to say, you know, that this is bad, and here's another one you, that just happened. Are, right. Whenever drones are in the news, it's all about. Oh no, it's surveillance. It's just getting video and making sure that our troops are safe. And no, actually, it's. Yeah, they do it gets of, the data they, from uh, the UK's like. Bureau of Investigative Journalism, which compiles media accounts of the strikes. Uh, it doesn't present grisly images of corpses or anything like that. It just pops up an alert saying a strike has occurred, according to this public database. Here's an example uh, on the uh, screen now. A uh, U.S. drone strike kills seven in North War Zikistan. And why is this not just a news app? And why is Apple even bothering to get involved in this? Because, yeah. you know, by entering this, then they are, they are making it political. They're making a, a judgment that this is something that people shouldn't see. And, you know, I, I don't think it's worth their time. I, I, I think it's the bad publicity. I, it's just why? And unless it, um, if it's something really grotesque, then I, I could see it maybe. But this seems to be about information and just let it happen. Yeah. yeah. Josh Begley, the guy who does the program, is a student at Clay Shirky's uh, lab at the NYU Interactive Telecommunications program. Mm. Uh, I'm curious how far up the chain this decision went, though. We, we keep getting indications that a lot of these decisions are not really right. huge decisions are made. It's like some guy who gets has to process so many of these apps every hour or people who have to, it's that it, it I, I just wonder at, at what salary level was the decision made to get rid of this app? The f Okay. So it's been rejected three times. Um, the first time it was kind of a basic version. Apple said it's too blah. The features and or content of your app were not useful or entertaining enough, or your app did not appeal to a broad <laughs> enough audience. The final version, which was rejected on August 27th, quote, we found that your app contains content that many audiences would find objectionable, which is not in compliance with the App Store <laughs> review guidelines. Wow. <laughs> I think it is a news app. I think that, that if you say, hey, yeah. this is a news app. Yeah. Hmm. Well, it's, anyway. I mean, it's, just, if, it's just too bad that sometimes your app review is in the hands of someone who might have a very, very subjective opinion of what your app does. Right. Um. And the other, the other side, and I talked a little bit about this on the radio show over the weekend, you can't really complain about the way Apple does things. Somebody wanted um, uh, a, a message, an app that could uh, turn off SMS messaging when you're driving. Um, and the problem is that Apple doesn't give you access, or actually would send an auto response. So you, so you get a text message. This is a great idea for an app. You get a text message. And uh, a program's running on your on your uh, iPhone that says, no, he's driving, and sends a message back, sorry, I'm driving, but I'll respond to you when I stop. This is a great idea. The problem is Apple doesn't give third-party programs access to the SMS API. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you can't do that. And uh, my point was, if you're playing in the Apple sphere, Apple makes the rules. You can't complain. This is the way it is. Uh, and there's choice. You can go do it on an Android if yeah. you don't like it. I mean, it. I've had recent experience of app rejections with my uh, SEO tutor apps. Um, 
Um, but uh, I won't hear a bad word said against them because they reversed their decision in the end. So, so that was. <laughs> so is there no, is there an appeal process uh, 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 done? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I mean, basically, I had about half a dozen apps in the App Store, in the iOS App Store. So I have half a dozen in the Mac App Store and half a dozen in the iOS App Store, and I just put a, a, a routine update in for one of them, and it got rejected. And it got rejected on the basis that it was a movie, which I thought was, you know, there's a clause in there that it shouldn't, if it's a movie, it should be in iTunes. If it's a, a, a book, it should be in the bookstore. And I just thought someone had just read the rules a bit too strictly because it was a video tutorial. It wasn't a theatrical release. You know, it wasn't a movie. It was a, a video tutorial. So I just uh, appealed against it, fully expecting to uh, have it approved. And it got rejected again. Mm. And um, unfortunately, they said, oh, we've had a, a closer look at the app and uh, we're actually going to withdraw all your other applications as well because they're all movies as well, which was a bit um, a bit uncomfortable. But uh, after about three months of uh, re-engineering the applications to add additional functionality in and resubmitting them and uh, talking to Apple, we finally managed to get the uh, the decision reversed. So they're going back in in the next week or so, which was a good thing. But you know, I, I, initially I, I I I was fully supportive what they said. If the rules said it shouldn't be a movie, fine. But you know, I, I felt it was a a misinterpretation of the rules because my content wasn't a theatrical release. But also there was, you know, there's there's four or five hundred other video tutorial apps in the App Store, and they hadn't been withdrawn or rejected. So as long as they're fair. Uh, uh, it's their store. They can set whatever rules they want, but they need to be fair and consistent across the board. That's fair to say that. Yeah. You can make the rules, Apple, but they've got to be applied consistently. I agree yeah. with 100%. And, and they have reversed the ruling in this case, which yeah. is great. So yeah. uh, good. it's good. What's the name of it? It's the SEO Tutor apps. There's one in there at the moment, which is SEO Tutor for iBooks author. Uh, but there's another four or five coming along. They've been in there before, but they'll be reinstated hopefully in the next week or two. Good job. Is this the new business that you were talking about? No, no, that's that's something separate. That's uh, in, in fact, in some ways, it was sort of brought on or, or accelerated by the the, the the problems I was having in the app store. Um, as you know, I've got the podcast and I deliver video tutorials through the podcast via iTunes. And I've always felt that that was a bit of a barrier to some people because, you know, most people understand the concept, but it, it is sometimes difficult to get head around, you know, how is it being delivered to you? So I always wanted to go ahead and put a, a, a magazine together, a new stand app, you know, that... Uh, uh, had some of my content and other well, what a content. good idea sell it newsstand instead yeah so i've now got uh, just just published issue number two of screencast online monthly and basically it's um it's about four hours worth of video content so last month's tutorials in streamable format uh, interspersed with articles and hints and tips and other stuff from from some of my mac colleagues and friends you know, people like uh, David Sparks and Alison Sheridan and Katie Floyd uh, and Wally from um, MacMania. Wally's doing a video column in there. Nice. And it's great. It's, it's, it's really interesting. Um, so that, that app is now in there. So people can subscribe to it like they do with the Screencast Online website or they can buy individual copies or, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice uh, system. Uh, it's based on a platform called Magcast, which is uh, one of these um, back-end systems that allow you to publish new stand apps very, very easily. And they sort out the application for you as well. I produce the content, they produce the platform and the app, and uh, we, we sort of co-produce it in, in newsstand. It works great. See, that's the other side of this. You say, you know, you got Apple's way or the highway, but on the other hand, it is an ecosystem that for a single entrepreneur like you is hugely, the potential is huge. You've got, you know, the Screencast Online website, you've mm -hmm. got the SCO Tutor apps, and now you've got yeah. a mag in the newsstand. And this is all you, just it by is, yourself. yeah. Me and my team of... Of one. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I think that that... So that's what's really appealing about it. And and you just have to understand, if you're doing that, that, well, Apple makes the rules. And I agree with you. They should be yeah. applied fairly. But they are Apple's rules to make. Or I mean, uh, to be fair, I mean, I do have guest contributors to the to the uh, to the magazine but most of the content is the video you know it's, it's another way of yeah. um it, it's sort of whenever we used to refer to a podcast we used to always say well it's like a magazine that you subscribe to um and now it is actually a magazine so people can subscribe to that's the magazine great. and, and that it. sort of breaks down a lot of the barriers of people's trying to understand you know what is it you're actually doing you know i, I now produce a magazine as well as producing the, the podcast we're going to take a break come back uh, there is a big breach uh, and I'm not sure what it means, so I'm going to get you guys to explain why I should worry if my UDID has been exposed to the world. <clears throat> Scary sounding. Uh, an FBI laptop has been hacked. Uh, <laughs> but first, a word from FreshBooks. 
fresh. If you're a small business owner, you know that the big, the worst day of the month is coming. Is just well, you just had it. Although if it were me, uh, I would have put it off, and I'd probably be doing my invoices right around now because nobody wants to do invoices at the end of the month. It's a pain in the butt. But you know what? You don't do them, you don't get paid. That's why I love FreshBooks. I discovered FreshBooks in 2004 when it was Amber MacArthur who introduced uh, me to FreshBooks. And uh, I'll tell you, this is the way. Cloud accounting. You know, now we call it cloud accounting. But, I, when it, you know, 5 million people have been using it since 2004. And uh, it's just fantastic. It's easy to use. Uh, it's not, you know, it's accounting for non-accountants. But it, it's getting you paid, which is the key to all of this. And by the way, your accountant will love it too. Because uh, FreshBooks makes the reports they need when, when it comes tax time. You can create invoices easily. Email them to your client. Your clients can view the invoices online and pay you on the spot. And now they've got this new iPhone app that lets you do it all from the iPhone. Including if you do time and hours, uh, keeping track of the hours and automatically porting them into your uh, invoices. So hit the road. And, uh, and and start uh, making a little bit more money with FreshBooks. Here's the deal. 30 days of unlimited use waiting for you right now at FreshBooks.com. You, uh, you can use your I, the iPhone app is free. You can use the iPhone app to do invoices. But to I mean, this is changing everything. To log your expenses. It Really, they're moving into the direction of really full, uh, full bookkeeping. But for, for people who are not, you know, professional bookkeepers three and a half million fresh books users have been sending and paying invoices at freshbooks.com now you can join them free for 30 days go to freshbooks.com and uh rocket power your small business big fan big big fan of fresh books it's just a neat story and a neat company another canadian company right on we got a couple of Winnipeggers in the audience. And that's two half of our sponsors today are Canadian companies. I love that. Freshbooks.com. Give them a try today. And if they ask you, uh, do me a favor and say, yeah, I heard Leo talking about it on uh, Mac Break Weekly. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, uh, we call them snowbirds, the people from Winnipeg. They're visiting now because winter has hit. <laughs> or will any minute now. I remember talking uh, to Metall a friend of mine who plays in the band Metallica, and he said, the coldest place we ever played in our life was Winnipeg. He said, Winnipeg in the winter. No. <laughs> no. Um, so FBI, uh, allegedly, FBI's hack, uh, laptop uh, hacked. Uh, hackers have released one million and one, so that they could say more than a million Unique device identifiers, UDIDs from iOS devices. The hacking group Ant Antisec says they came from an FBI-owned laptop. Why the FBI had these UDIDs, I don't know. The group published a file containing UDIDs as well as push notification tokens, device names, and more last night, promising that they have, in fact, 12 million, 12 million, and some of them have some very personal data, full names, cell phone numbers, home addresses. There has been no confirmation uh, from the FBI, but the uh, anti-sec folks claim to have remotely accessed supervisor agent Christopher K. Stangle's data in March using a Java vulnerability. There's a few of those. Um, atomic reference array. Uh, this is a well-known vulnerability, which was patched in February. Apparently, agent uh, Stangle didn't know that. Um, wow. So what, uh, maybe Jason, maybe you can explain w what these UDIDs are and, and is it of value to anybody to have your UDID? I mean, they're, they're like serial numbers essentially. And every iOS device has one. And, you know, it, they used to be used to identify you to, through apps to a server so that they could tell who you were and say, oh, yes, I already know who this iPhone is and I can send the data back to it. And Apple deprecated that and said, you can't do that. So, in fact, they've been know, rejecting apps since March uh, that use UDID. Right, right. So the question is, uh, I don't think they have much value. I mean, I guess it means somebody could put you on their um, ad hoc uh, beta list and let you beta <laughs> test wow. uh, apps. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, but beyond that, I think the I think the only question that that really makes sense here is who who has a list of these? 
how did they get them and why do they have them? Um, beyond that, I don't, I don't really know. I mean, that, that's the real question is, is, was there some government agency that had uh, these UDIDs and why? And how did they get them? And what does that mean? Because I can't think of any reason you'd actually need a UDID unless maybe, I don't know if UDIDs ever get passed in, in network traffic um, in, any, in any way. So I, I don't think I can... I have a hard time guessing how these would be used unless it's something that, that goes to the level of like government wiretap kind of stuff. Uh -huh. And that's the, the claim by some is that Apple gave these numbers uh, out, but there's no evidence of that. Um, but where would you get 12 million UDIDs? I think probably that's what Andy Sec is, that's between the lines oh. of what Andy Sec's up to is they're saying, hey, look, the FBI had these. Now there is a tool, kimosabi.net. K-I-M-O-S-A-B-E dot N-E-T slash test dot H-T-M-L. You can enter in your UDID. Now, I don't... I, <laughs> <laughs> he promises he's not going to use them. He says anything. he's not going to use it. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's worth anything anyway, but if you, you could at least see if it's in that database um, or not. Yeah, it could be that this was stolen from somebody who keeps it uh, from the days when apps did send UDIDs, some app developer server side, you know, that kept them all and that there was a breach. Uh, it is possible whether, you know, like a gaming uh, service or something like that, where uh, all these games used this service and they all sent the UDID to verify it. So it's possible. It isn't, there are places other than Apple that have big databases of UDIDs, potentially, at least. Yeah, if you were, uh, well, it would have to be an app with a lot of users. It would have to be like Instagram, right? Or a shared, you know, or a shared oh. surface like OpenFaint or something like that. Ah, where, of course, OpenFaint, yeah. yeah. That's the, that was the predecessor to Game Center, the third-party predecessor right. to Game Center. That would presumably have a lot of them. Or maybe a big purchaser like a, like the U.S. government. if they Do they log all the UDIDs of all the oh, iOS yeah. devices that they purchase? I don't know. They might. Um, but again, having your UDID in and of itself is completely worthless, right? It's like, what's the serial only, number of my iPhone? It's like, yeah, I suppose it's only useful if it's linked to some other personal information, perhaps, or if it's just part of a, you know, it's a field in a database which contains other personal information. But the, the UUID itself, I mean, I only ever use mine, you know, if, if you know, subscribing to uh, test flight or something, if someone wants to send me some demo software and that, that or they want me to right. beta test it, just give them the UUID and that's. That's the route to your machine so they can properly identify you. But on its own, I don't think there's really much people can do with that. Well, yeah. I mean, it, is, it, is, it is all about identifying you. I mean, there was, uh, I looked up a, uh, uh, there's a report from last year on a site called Corte.si, a, a security blog that analyzed, like, were all, what, what, who are the leading aggregators of UDIDs? And it's a list that includes Amazon.com, uh, uh, <laughs> TapJoyAds.com. Uh, a lot, oh, yeah, a lot of ads, ad, ad networks would know. A lot, lot of ad networks, yeah. analytics.localytics.com. It's just, as, as we found out in the latest uh, uh, bre breach with Apple IDs, it's not so much that this one thing is the key to, that unlocks the entire castle, It's but it is one more piece of information that everybody supposes is private that you don't know what could happen with it in the wrong hand. So no one no one could be pleased that there are 12 million uh, out, in the, out in the field like that, but the the good slash bad news is that well this is nothing new believe it or not if you used an iPhone before two thousand in two thousand eleven or before it's already in the field people have already been grabbing them have a good day yay I mean it raises more questions than it than it answers it's uh, why does the FBI yeah. have it what what's the point who, who well, it's, it's, that's that's, that's probably that's probably related to getting warrants because you have to be right. when you when you want wiretap you have to be specific you can't simply say any phone that this suspect has you have to say we want to tap on this specific device and here are the terms that we want it for right. so that's probably I'm I'm taking a guess I don't here think a phone number would be sufficient conversations I've had previously efficient. yeah uh, yeah but now uh, phone numbers are malleable if you want you right. you are talking about a tracking device you're talking about a warrant that applies to a specific right. device if i'm re if i'm re if i'm remembering conversations that i had with law enforcement about 10 months ago accurately right. uh, you do need to be specific about what device you want a warrant on it makes me wonder if this is uh, this sorry. this information might have actually been one of the reasons why apple uh, did disable udid right. For apps, right? They knew right. there was a leak, or they knew that there could be a leak, and that they didn't want that, 
you know, information to be sent out there in the future. Well, and UD, so I wonder about the, that. the notion of a UDID was all, already a little bit controversial, although there's MMEIs. Every device has some sort of, has to have some sort of uniquely identifying number on the network. I mean, it's just the right, way and it there's, is. And there's reasons Mac why addresses. you want that, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's friendlier if you if you go to a, you know, you run an app and then you run it again on your same device, right. having the app server be able to be like, oh, I remember you, even though you didn't create an account or log in, that could yeah. be, I mean, that's why people used it is because it was this convenient thing. Thing. It right. turns out they also did things like embed those in their ad network packages that they put in their ads right. so that they would say, hey, I, we already know who you are right. because you use these other apps. And I think that's why Apple uh, put the kibosh on it. We're going to take a break, come back with more, your picks of the week, an Audible ad and uh, a few other things. But I think it'd be kind of fun to look at what you might have missed if you missed any of our shows in the preceding week. Previously on Twit NSFW. Just tell them now, they better hit the ground. All you hear is Hostage Down. Where the office does as heck allows. <laughs> All I hear is mm, Hostage Down. Terrorists get in the message now. All you hear is Hostage Down. Dual car, man, we're the best in town. The internet says mm, Hostage Down. Triangulation. A lot of oh, people know unbelievable. It, it's, yes. Right. It's basically a service where lazy reporters go on and they say, hey, I need a source for this story I'm doing about boats. And someone says, I'll be your story as long as you uh, you mention my boating company or you mention uh, my, my boat sales website. Windows Weekly. Look at there. Look at there. Paul in shorts. Paul, put your pants on. <laughs> Paul. I hear one joke about how I just came out of the closet. <laughs> in in shorts. In shorts. <laughs> All about Android. Hello. It's 6.23 p.m. Whoa. On Tuesday. Oh, is a <laughs> You know, Android users are so easily amused. If you missed this week on Twit, you missed a lot. <laughs> I want, I want I, if you missed NSFW last night or Sunday night we did NSFW and it's not on there because it was a uh, out of cycle NSFW uh, for NSFW from Dragon Con. Yep, and and that'll that'll be rerun in its normal location um, today after all about Android Good. if Tony uh, finishes. Did you did you get uh, any uh, uh, footage of the parade? Well, I actually, so I didn't, not for Twit, but Bill Meeks, who's out there for Bleeding Cool, asked me to do some footage for them. Oh, oh you got footage for another company. I did. <laughs> I, I, I was unaware that, that I would be <laughs> asked to do that. Hey, but yeah. no, it's, 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 it's okay. But it wasn't live. We do stuff live. It, it's it was okay. all pre-recorded and okay. SD and, and, you know. No big deal. Sorry if I hurt your feelings, Leo. <laughs> First Apple doesn't invite me to their events now this. <laughs> and then and then Chad goes on and just covers the parade without you. I, Walmart is checking in iPhone app checkout feature. Everybody wants to be everybody wants to be an Apple store. That's the new thing, right? JC Penny got uh, got Ron Johnson and now Ron says we're going to get rid of all the clerks and we'll have instant checkout at Ace JC Penny. Ron ran Apple stores uh, for years. Walmart is testing an iPhone app checkout feature. That would allow shoppers to scan items using their iPhones, then pay at a self-checkout counter, eliminating employees. <laughs> <laughs> I never liked these things anyway, but, but maybe yeah, if it's I, an, an iPhone. I, I really <laughs> wish that every receipt at a self-checkout kiosk said, and here's how much money we knocked off your bill because yeah. you checked yourself out instead you of using an employee <laughs> to do it for you. Yeah, really. We gave you, here's, it's only 17 cents, but at least we, we acknowledge that your time and your frustration is worth money. Yeah. Samsung says if Apple releases an LTE event, which they will almost certainly do on the 12th, uh, they will sue them immediately. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so there. Damn. Uh, I guess they they have uh, they had 3G patents. Apparently, they also have uh, LTE patents. Um, okay. Uh, let's see what else. New Apple connectors unavailable now, now this this worries me a little bit of course uh, we've heard all the all heard the rumors now that apple's gonna replace the 30 pin connector with a new nine uh pin uh connector and of course key for many of us who have existing cables and docks is some sort of adapter uh, according to jeremy horowitz editor-in-chief of the i lounge 
Apple uh, new Apple connectors are uh, unavailable. Third-party add-ons may miss the holidays. I don't know how you would know this since they haven't even announced this new mm -hmm. connector, but apparently... Uh, well, well, that's what they're, they're talking about, is that because no one has seen this new connector... How could they possibly even get it out in time? Exactly. So because the specs haven't uh, been released on how these connectors are used, uh, third parties w uh, will not have enough time to turn around for holidays. So you're not going to have any docks for the holidays, is, is his argument. Yikes. I'm sure it, Apple will have some accessories. Apple, <laughs> Apple, Apple will sell them. Do you think they'll bundle them in the box? No. Yeah. No, no. Mm, Everything's extra no, now. No. Twenty nine ninety five. Yeah. The original iPod had like ten different things in that box, and now it's there's nothing. It's Is there going to be a, a new iPad Hi-Fi device? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I have one in my. Actually, I'll be the only one left who has one. You know what they could do? One in the kitchen. Somebody in the chat room's got the idea um, that Apple might deprecate connecting the iPhone entirely, right? Zeth in the chat room says they'll be pushing AirPlay and uh, over-the-air uh, Wi-Fi uh, syncing. Yeah, as long as, unless they do over-the-air charging. Unless there's a Tesla generator oh. that they're going to be making, I don't think that'll ever happen. Well, maybe they will. A lot of phones yeah, now have <laughs> wire-free charging. No, now, yeah, there's going to be a USB charging. You think they'll do inductance charging? I there'll be a USB did, cable in the box, won't there? Will there be yeah. a USB cable? Oh, yeah, there'll sure. be a USB cable with a new connector and a standard USB connector, definitely. Uh, they, they couldn't ship it without that, really. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you get the phone, but no charger. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's our new phone. See you in three hours when you drive back with $30 to buy the cable we didn't include. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break, come back with our picks of the week. Andy Anatko is here from the Chicago Sun Times. He will be. Now, how are we going to do this? You're flying out uh, Sunday? I'm flying out on Monday. I'll be here Monday, Monday night. To be there Monday night. Okay. I'm not leaving until like late Saturday. So. So you're going to go to the event on Tuesday, uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Mm -hmm. At 10 a.m. We'll cover the event live. I guess when you come out of the event, I'm hoping that they'll do the hands-on thing, and you've brought your helmet cam and the backpack <laughs> with the antenna, right? I'll bring my Al Franklin mo mobile uplink yeah. with a big dish on the head and everything. Yeah. And then you could you could come and go in the demo room and they won't notice the fact that you are recording everything. I'm sure they're not really paying close attention. Okay, they're not, they're, okay. Apple's not known to be very, very you know controlling about how they handle the PR. Yeah. So I'm sure that. Last time we did this, uh, Becky Worley, uh, uh, wasn't last time, it was a couple of years ago, jumped Steve Jobs for an ad hoc interview. Uh, she's not been invited back yet again either. <laughs> so still, they're ba totally <laughs> worth it. <laughs> they're, they're basically. That, I, I have to. I have to. I have to. I have to defend her at that point. Oh. If you got like a, a pleasant interview with Steve Jobs ad hoc, totally yeah. worth it. it. Wasn't pleasant, but he, she got the interview. Well, you know, it's, he, didn't, he, didn't, he didn't. She didn't get anything thrown at her. No, no, he didn't hit her. Yeah. PR people sw swift, swiftly intervened. But I don't believe punches were thrown. They know they're ca they carry zip ties, but hey, we learn something every day. <laughs> and mace. <laughs> um, and Jason, you'll be in there too, so maybe we can grab you afterwards. Uh, we'll do Mac Break Weekly uh, right after uh, the event. Um, and uh, so that's going to be fun. So Wednesday will be our time then. Uh, we'll we'll do a, begin our live coverage around 10 a.m. Pacific. That's uh, 1 p.m. Eastern time on the 12th. And uh, shortly after the event concludes, we'll do Mac Break Weekly. Right. And we will have, uh, Brian Hogg assures me, we will have a Tim Cook puppet for the reenactment <laughs> during the event. We're going to put him on green screen. Who's puppeteer for that? Uh, Brian will. Oh, good. Oh, oh no, he's going to be on Skype. Oh, wonderful. So we'll put him in, in here in a green screen, and then we'll mat we in. What I want to do is, you know, follow the live blogs and mat in the images. We should add some some red curtains to the yeah. sides of yeah. our of our yeah, avatars. Yeah, we got to get to work on that. And right. Then, so he'll just be here, and we'll just go to him. As and and he'll read the quotes from the live blogs. Wonderful. He'll act them out. I think you know it's going to be far better than actually being at the event. That'll be really what, professional. What you, what you should also do, you should you should green screen like a like a red velvet opera box, and then you and Dvorak could be like Statler and Waldorf. <laughs> <laughs> I will be Statler. I will. <laughs> Oh no! I'm going to be annoying Apple. For? I'm going to be annoying Apple. Executive. Right? Whoa! Yeah. No. Yeah. I'll, annoying Apple will be there throwing, uh, th hurling epithets. Tom Merritt will be the objective journalist in this scenario. We'll see what happens. What could possibly go wrong? 
Nothing can possibly go wrong. Jason Snell mm -hmm. is also here from uh, Macworld Magazine. He's editor-in-chief there, uh, editorial director of consumer publications for IDG, and now the uh, guy in charge of the new Tech Hive blog, which emerges next week at techhive.com. Next week, you said, Jason? Next week. It's exciting. Oh, yeah. Very excited. Next week, be, there'll be some stuff to talk about. There's going to be some stuff to talk about, yeah. It's going to be a busy week. Yeah. See, this way you avoided the whole rumor cycle. You didn't have to repeat those things. <laughs> we didn't get to, unfortunately. And Don McAllister, Screencasts Online, now the new SCO, Screencasts Online Tutor apps, and mm -hmm. the new magazine on the, the uh, that is available on the newsstand for iPhone and iPad. What's that called? It's uh, Screencast Online Monthly, but you can just go into iTunes and search the iTunes store. It'll pop up. You don't have to go into Newsstand to find it. Perfect. Screencast Online. Just look for it and buy everything that Don does because it's really a great. <laughs> no, seriously. It's a, if you want to learn specific apps or how to use the Mac, uh, he's really great at that. Well, the nice thing is with the with the the magazine is you can uh, there's a free episode there's a free issue in there anyway so you can just download that and have like the apps free you can download the free issue and if you subscribe you get the first month free anyway so you can get Yay. tons of stuff. Our show today brought to you by our good friends at Audible Audiobooks for the masses, 100,000 plus titles. Uh, I am a big, uh, I always loved reading, but who has time in, uh, you know, nowadays with everything we do? So that when I'm now, when I'm in the car driving the kids to school, I don't have much of a commute anymore. I almost regret that because I used to get two hours of reading every single day guaranteed. But at the gym, uh, walking the dog, doing the dishes, I listen all the time. In fact, I, with my Sonos, I have my audiobooks piped throughout the house. Mm -hmm. So I can't do it if anybody's home. But if it's just me, man, I'm listening. I love it. I really love it. So um, uh, audible.com. Now, if you go to audible.com slash MacBreak, you can uh, sign up for the gold plan, which is a book a month. But that first, first month is free. And, uh, and your first book is free. Now, I'm, we're going to get recommendations from Jason and Andy. But I have to point out that the new... A book that's been very controversial. The U.S. government wanted to uh, stop this book by the Na one of the Navy SEALs, SEAL Team 6 member, who uh, was part of the uh, uh, raid on Osama bin Laden, has written a book called No Easy Day. It is now available on audible.com. Certainly going to be on my next listen. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll, he's not narrator on this, but uh, boy, uh, that'll be very dramatic. This is the kind of book you want to listen to, I think, because because the drama comes out. Andy, what are you listening to right now on Audible? Um, next on deck is a real sounds like a really really interesting book. You st you start off with the description of the book from Amazon, and you start off by saying it's a collection of short stories that celebrate the life and the works of Ray Bradbury, and you find out that it's got s stories by Margaret Atwood, uh, Dave Eggers, Neil Gaiman, Joe Hill, wow. uh, uh, Jacqueline Mitchard. All wow. these people that you would want to read short stories from, and then you say, "Okay, well, I wonder if the audiobook is any good." Well, I mean, you, sometimes you get sort of a sort of a half baked narrator. The narrators are George Takei, Ooh. Edward Herman, Kate Mulgrew, F. Murray Abraham, Neil Gaiman, and James Urbaniak uh, from uh, uh, the Venture Brothers. And that was like done. What was that done? <laughs> I, should I put no? Nope, buy it. Okay, done. What's it called? I'm sorry, it's called Shadow Show, All New Stories in Celebration of Ray Bradbury. And it's wow. edited by Sam Weller and Mort Castle. Uh, good 14 hours, enough to get you through a few weeks of, of, uh, of stale commutes. So these are not, are these Ray Bradbury stories? No, 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 these are not Ray Bradbury stories. Each one is sort of a celebration of his his work. Some like a... Uh, uh, Neil Gaiman's story is about a guy who remembers everything about Ray Bradbury's stories, but can't remember his name. Uh, they, they, they sort of like intersect with like the world that Ray Bradbury created. So cool. they aren't they they aren't Ray Bradbury short stories. Each one is an original. But again, anything anything that's read by George Decay, you know that that's going to be worth your click. This sounds great. Shadow Show, in celebration of uh, Ray Bradbury, of course, who recently passed away. That sounds that's great. What do you what? With a forward by Ray Bradbury, by the way. Oh, he knew he was going to die, so he wrote the uh, forward? Uh, he was a planner. He, Johnny <laughs> Deadline. That's what he was. Johnny Obviously, Deadline. they planned this book before his, he passed away. <laughs> Thank you for the introduction. Now you must die. <laughs> uh, anyway, I can't wait. That sounds great. Uh, Shadow Show. What about you, uh, Jason? You said you had something you wanted to do, a plug. 
I do. This uh, this past weekend was the Hugo Awards, which is the annual yes. awards for the best in science fiction. Yes, blocked by <laughs> Ustream, but that's enough. and it was. Oh, that was so fascinating. Yes, they showed wow. the clips for the winning TV shows and movies, uh, the nominees, and and Ustream shut them down because of the content <laughs> patrol. Well, that they're was right. Said, this uh, is copyrighted. <laughs> they're right. So unbelievable. This, yeah, unbelievable. This how, so anyway, this is how crazy it is. The uh, the winner, your winner for best novel uh, is called Among Others by Joe Walton. Uh, she is a Welsh writer who now lives in Montreal. Great book. I voted for it for the Hugo Award. I'm glad it won. It's one of the best books I've read in the, in recent years. It's available on Audible, unabridged. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's actually kind of a funny mixture. It's a book. Anybody who's read a lot of science fiction will love it because it's about science fiction novels. It's about a girl who is growing up in England and uh, and she kind of seeks refuge in, in reading. And then it's also got a fantasy element to it because her family is um, is magical, actually. So it's a sort of a fantasy wow. novel about science fiction. It's just so charming. Joe Walton's a, a great writer. Um, she's a, a big sci-fi fan, but she's also just a, a fantastic novelist. And uh, it's uh, definitely a worthy winner. I think it's going to sweep all of the major sci-fi and fantasy novel awards. And uh, I cannot uh, recommend it enough. And it, I have to say, it's narrated by one of my favorite uh, audible narrators, Catherine Kelgren. I'm going to play a little sample of the audio on this. The furnaceite factory in Abercumboy killed all the trees for two miles around. She's got the most beautiful Welsh accent. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, I just love her. <laughs> and that's it's a it's a Welsh schoolgirl uh, in an English boarding school, and so she's completely isolated, away from her family, and miserable. And so to have that Welsh voice telling the story is uh, perfect. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, that's going on my next listen. You have this wish list, which you can add. Uh, and, it, and the problem with this show is I add things to my wish list, like, constantly, so I'm way behind on uh, books. But this one's definitely uh, going on my wish list. This sounds wonderful. Among Others by Joe Walton. And I'm going to add the Ray Bradbury tribute as well. Sigh. <laughs> so you get one book. This is the challenge. Audible.com slash MacBreak. You'll be signing up for the gold account. Book a month. It plays back on everything, all your iOS devices. There's a, a great Audible app, which I recommend for, of course, iOS, but also Android and Windows Phone. And that's a, that's a nice app because you see everything you've ever uh, purchased on Audible. Your entire library is there. You can listen to any book. A great way to keep track of your Audible uh, reads. Um <laughs> You know what's neat? This is an Audible Frontiers, which means it was not, the publisher did not want to make an audiobook out of, among others, but Audible said, no, this is worth recording. So they recorded it themselves. It's an Audible Frontiers production. And uh, that's one of the things I love Audible for. They are just great. Audible.com slash MacBreak. Get your first book free. But I warn you, you're going to get hooked. Time for our picks of the week. Let's start with Don McAllister, your pick, sir. Okay, well, I'm going to pick, um, it's not a bundle, but it is a bundle of applications that are currently on special offer. It's uh, Get Back to Mail. It's about, well, it's actually 12 Apple Mail tools that uh, the developers have all bandied together oh. and uh, decided to put discounts on them. And it's got some of my favorites in here. It's got Mail Tags, uh, Mail Act On, Mail Perspectives, Docstar, Mail Hub. Uh, take Control of Apple Mail. Uh, that's a, a good book by Joe Kissel. Um, some of the ones that I've not seen before, oh, Spam Civ is another one. They're all fantastic mail applications, and they're all, well, they're up to 50% off at the moment. So uh, it's just for one week. But if you oh, go this across... this is good. i got to get this. Yeah. Now, these yeah, will yeah. work with Mountain Lion Mail? Uh, yeah, I've just downloaded one, actually, one I've not seen before, Mail Hub, and they have got a Mountain Lion version there. But I would imagine most of these. In fact, yeah... Um, Spansive, I've just downloaded an update for Spansive. I know Mail Tags and Mail Act On, they're two of my other favorites as well. Uh, the others I haven't played with. Uh, Docstar is another one I've installed and, and, and use quite a lot. So uh, there's some great uh, great applications in there if you're a heavy mail user. Um, and they're all half price. As little yeah, as three yeah, bucks. Say, it's not yeah. a bundle for the whole lot. It's You yeah. can selectively yeah. go in and buy individual ones, but they're all 33% off or 50% off. Offer this week only. It's at getbackthenumber2mail.com. Good pick. Thank you. Uh, Don McAllister. Jason Snell, your pick of the week. My pick is an app called Mixel. And you may have heard about it before because there was an iPad app called Mixel uh, that was a kind of a collage tool, a, co a collaborative collage tool. You'd find a bunch of images and throw them together and you could sort of cut around them and, and slide them around on screen. And it was kind of fun. I used it for a while and then I stopped and it turned out everybody else did too. So what the creators of the service did is they shut it down and they made a new app called Mixel that's on iPhone and it's a much oh. more practical app. 
Um, and it's, uh, it's like Instagram, except it lets you make collages. So you take pictures in your camera roll and then you can choose oh, a, a photo nice. style and you can shuffle around the different shapes and you can actually touch and drag uh, so you can get the right crops and you can drag and drop uh, different photos to different places and then you can share them. So you can create, instead of a single image, it's a really fast, fun way to make the, uh, to make the image um, uh, you know, a multiple image thing and then share that like with everybody that. on, on their social service, which is kind of like on the, on Instagram where you can like people, you know, like people's photos on their service, but you can also share it to Instagram on Twitter, Facebook and the lot. And it's great. I, over the weekend, uh, they, uh, my family and I went to the, um, first game at the new, uh, stadium at uh, UC Berkeley, the California Memorial Ooh, stadium, yeah. uh, upgrade. And, and, you know, I, while I was there, I, I put out a picture, if you can see that vaguely of uh, my family. And it's a little collage in Mixel that I did instead, and uh, it looked great. So it was a lot of fun, and more than just a single Instagram. So it's uh, I, I believe it's free too. Wow. So you can get it in the App Store or go to Mixel.cc, I believe. And it's I, iPhone only, not iPad. Because iPhone. Okay. Yes, the original was iPad, and then right. this one is an iPhone Got product, it. and it really is sort of like imagine Instagram, except you can do multiple photos in a in a collage, and it helps make you uh, build the collage. Interesting really nice. pivot. I, I really like the old Mixel, but this looks actually better. M-I-X-E-L if you want to uh, download that. Um, my pick of the week this week uh, is something free. I, I was a big fan of Avid Studio, which was kind of a, an iMovie replacement for the iPad. Uh, it's been acquired by Corel, and they've switched it with Pinnacle Studio. But the good news is uh, this, I think it's normally $10. This program is for now free. So if you were an Avid Studio user, you'll still have it, but they're not going to update it anymore. And the new program is called Pinnacle Studio uh, by Corel. Um, and, you know, I was a big fan of Avid Studio. It looks like many of the features, if not all the features of Avid Studio, have been included in this. New, in fact, it looks like it's the same program. And really, I thought, a, a very nice editor. It was a little buggy, had a little quirks. So uh, maybe having uh, Corel pick it up and uh, update it they, uh, as Pinnacle Studio will uh, improve the program. Certainly, this is your chance to get it now for free and have it on your iPad for future reference. Andy Anako, your pick of the week. My pick is a free app called Grandview that might be wonderful and it might be completely bonkers. Uh, you, <laughs> you, I'm try, I, I, I tried it a few days ago. I'm still going back and forth on the point of this. It's You've heard about these distraction-free word processors that better than full screen mode even that just tries to remove all user interface and let you focus just on the writing. What Grandview does is once you enter, you, you hit a hotkey in any application and you enter this mode where you see nothing except the word that you're typing. Not the words, the word that you're typing. If you what? type T-H-E, what? if you see, I, I wish, I'm sorry that I can't, I couldn't get this hooked I'll, up I'll to put, the screen I'll put it on me. here and we'll, and we'll put it, and put I'll it do it. If, yeah. if, you type, if you type the word the, first you see the big letter T, and then a slightly smaller T-H, what? and then the word the. Then when you tap the space bar, it blanks again. And then you start <laughs> typing quick, brown, fox, jumps, over, the, lazy, Dog. When you hit the period, you see the entire sentence. But as soon as you start typing another sentence, you go, Jack Dawes, love my big <laughs> sphinx of quartz. That's bizarre. And it's bizarre. Mm. It's 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 you're, you're focusing so much on each individual word, word it's distracting you from the sentence that you're actually writing. Um, there is also a mode where you can it will act more as a basic distract. And excuse me, when you uh, when you hit the hotkey to get out of there, you, the text you typed is in the clipboard. You can paste it into whatever app you're actually in. Uh, there's also a, a, a more conventional full screen editing mode, which is rather nice. It's kind of nice to have this thing that's that's in every single that would work in every single app that you use. Also, the other the, the I've been told by some people that they're people with low vision problems that this is absolutely this would be great for if you had mac macular degeneration, for instance. Yeah, and you don't want and you don't want to use some of the assistive technologies that are already in the uh, in the Mac. Uh, and it's weird because I, I try, it it was so bizarre that I had to start looking at other people's opinions of this. And there are some people who feel as though, well, I've never been more productive, man. <laughs> also, also it's, it's a great way if you're writing in Starbucks to make sure that every single person in the entire room can see everything that you write. <laughs> so <laughs> They're going to use this in the remake of The Shining, right? Wow. Yes. <laughs> All work and no play <laughs> makes Jack a dull boy. Boom. Oops, I forgot the period. <laughs> so you can. What's weird is you can backspace. Yeah, <laughs> that's very strange. Um, it's, it is very strange. 
Um, yeah, I, well, it's free. It's free. It's fun. <laughs> I, I, I suppose that if I were giving a presentation, I needed to type things out. That would be a lovely way to sort of clear where I am from the slide I am to write something that everybody can copy down. So on that basis, it seems like a nice thing to have installed. I'm not sure that I would want to start National Novel Writing Month with this as my word processor. I think this would be a challenge at best. Well, I think it should. you make it a little bit harder. Great for haikus. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Wow. I mean, you, you, you have I mean, the, the, the classic problem with writing is that you obsess too much over the, the paragraph that you're writing that you never actually finish the book. This lets you obsess over every letter of every word. I'm not sure if this is a way, a, a key towards productivity and finishing your novel. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm suggesting. I could be wrong. <laughs> and you oh you can suggest you can select fonts you can select you know green on black if you like there is there are options here I'm 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 glad that we live in a world in which somebody thought of this app and someone actually wrote it that I will say that without irony and without sarcasm <laughs> I'm glad I live in a world in which this app exists <laughs> it's probably just an API call it's probably a very straightforward API call so uh, c command shift a. Brilliant. What you've just written is now saved in your clipboard. Paste the text wherever you'd like. You can also reopen the note by clicking the logo in the menu bar. Uh, and then you can change the font and all, all of that stuff. This is, yeah, very interesting. I think you should pick a particularly unusual font to make it really fun. Cairo. Cairo. Yeah. You can have a cursor, auto save to clipper, run on system startup, mouse activates. <laughs> a, cursor. a cursor for your one letter. <laughs> <laughs> where, where am I typing next? Let's see. This <laughs> is the next letter. Weird, weird, weird. Okay. It, I, I, think that, I think that would be doubly awesome if you've got like airplay mirroring on and you've got that 60-inch television. Yeah. <laughs> so that, Dad, can we please watch cartoons? Do we have to watch you <laughs> type write? one letter at a Time. No, son, this is how your father makes money to put food on the table. You're going to watch me write this thousand-word review of this new watch band. <laughs> wow. Grand view. Let me, let me type this here. Command shift A. Wait a minute. Okay. So anyway, oh, I'm sorry. I'm having too much fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, stop. <laughs> stop now. This, see, the, the, the fact that we have so much fun using this thing means that this thing definitely has value. There, yeah. We've all used lame apps that are just lame apps. Right. This is this is a fun lame app. Well, oh, it depends how long the fun lasts, though, doesn't it? I think well, it's, it's free. free. It's free, exactly. <laughs> if I were paying just 50 like, bucks for it, I might be... Oh, the yeah, lottery yeah. ticket gives you three days worth of thoughts about how you're going to spend your $300 million dollars. Even though it only lasts three days, that's a dollar well spent. This is free. How can you do better than that? <laughs> <laughs> Andy Anaka writes for the Chicago Sun-Times. And when I say write, I mean write. He is a writer's writer. Great stuff. Always uh, fun to read. And uh, you can, of course, catch his uh, blog at cwob.com. And he joins us every week. He'll be out here next week covering the Apple event. I hope uh, to have my first visit to the Brick House. You haven't been out here? Oh, yeah. Well, I've never been up there. We'll get you up here for sure. Somehow. Excellent. Somehow. Jason Snell, now editorial director for the entire IDG world of consumer publications, including Macworld, PC World, and the new techhive.com, which goes out of beta next week. Can't wait. Great to have you always, Jason. It's always uh, great to be on. I'm sorry I couldn't be in Petaluma today, but I, I'm okay. busy down here. But yeah, I'll be yeah. back you soon. Got, you got I'll work to do. There. I'm sorry you're not going to be on the cruise. I'm more sorry about that. Yeah, me too. Next time. Uh, Don McAllister and I will be on the uh, next Mac Mania cruise in November. I don't know if there's any room left. I think it's sold out very quickly because it's a solar eclipse a cruise, but you could check it at insightcruises.com. Uh, both of us will be giving lectures, more Don than I, <laughs> than me. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, I'm doing four. That's fair. That's good. Oh, there you go. That's four right. for me is good. I'm, I'm pretty lazy. And I'm going to do the Genius Bar again, or we call it the oh, yeah. Ingenious Bar. <laughs> to avoid copyright uh, problems. And basically, w the nice thing about the Mac Mania Genius Bar is it's act actually at a bar. Oh, yeah. <laughs> True. Yeah. Every time you can't answer a question, you got to do a shot. Drink. <laughs> so uh, Sal Segoyan and you and I and the, the gang will be sitting at the crow's nest just before dinner. And if you have a question, come and see if you can get us to speak. It'll <laughs> I'll type it out in Grandview. It'll be great. Don is also at screencastsonline.com, and that's where you can find all his other great stuff. Thank you all for being here. We really appreciate it. A lot of fun. 
We will be at a different time next week so we can cover the Mac event live. Tune in Wednesday, September 12th, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, 1700 UTC for the live reenactment. Uh, I'm so happy about this. <laughs> of the uh, Tim Cook uh, and uh, et, et cetera announcement of the uh, new iPhone. Uh, and uh, then shortly thereafter, Mac Break Weekly. At this time next week, it'll be Security Now. We'll flip flop with the uh, Steve Gibson show. Thanks for joining us. Now get back to work because break time is over.